All right, church, if you have your Bibles, I want you to open up to uh, Galatians chapter 5 and just hold what you have there. If you don't have your Bible, if, you're, if your Bible is electronic, just take it to Galatians chapter 5. All right, so here's the deal. If you were here last week, you noticed that I got a little fired up. I smacked the pulpit. The lid was not on my vitamin water. Boom, it spilled over, went everywhere. I want to thank my son Drew for coming up and sopping up the mess. But I'm going to keep the lid on this morning, and I'm going to try not to get uh, so rowdy, right? I'm not making any promises, but um, this morning I want to take some time to do a teaching and because I believe that it's so important. If you are here last week, we talked about addictions, and we talked about how addictions um, control our, uh, a lot of people's lives. And we talked about how to overcome those addictions, we need to have salvation in Jesus, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and we need to stand firm in the Word of God. And we talked about every kind of addiction. You know, it, it doesn't matter. You know, the enemy is wanting to uh, have addictions cling on to us to where we cannot be effective and um, so this morning, I want to talk a little bit about walking and living life in the Spirit, okay? This is so vital and this is so important. I want you to understand something. There are educated people in this world with, with, with master's and bachelor's degrees and everything that are ignorant to the Word of God and they're ignorant to the things of the Spirit, okay? They're intelligent they have more degrees than a thermometer, but they're ignorant to the things of God. That does not mean that they're not intelligent. It just means that they're not walking and living in the Spirit, okay? I want you to understand that the enemy does not want us to live life walking by the Spirit. He wants us to be ignorant to the things of the Spirit so we live life by our flesh, and by our own intellect. Does that make sense? We're going to look at a lot of scriptures this morning. And as always, uh, you can find every one of these scriptures in the order of which I'm going to speak on them this morning when we post our messages online. All right? So uh, Galatians chapter 5, I want to pray really quick. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your presence in this place this morning. And I'm asking, Lord, that you would just prepare our minds right now to receive from you what you have for us. God, I'm asking that you would remove all distractions in the natural and in the supernatural. I'm asking that you would prepare our hearts this morning, that our hearts would be a fertilized soil that this seed would fall on, and that it would produce kingdom fruit. God, I'm asking that you would just uh, anoint my speech this morning, that every word that comes out of my mouth would be guided by your Holy Spirit and not by my flesh. Lord, I'm asking that you would touch our minds this morning as, as we get into your word, that everything that we look at this morning would make sense to us. Bring life change to us this morning, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, here we go. Galatians chapter 5. I want to start at verse 16, and I'm going to read through 26. This is our launching scripture of the day. And say this with me. So I live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. All right. So let me, let, me, let me just read this now. So I say, live by the Spirit, all right? Live by the Spirit. This is very important. And if you do this, the, the effect would be that you will not gratify the desires of your sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now I want to give you, it, it tells us right here, it starts to tell us, what are the acts of sinful nature? 
And it goes on to say the acts of sinful nature are obvious. It starts off with sexual immorality. Now, the, the, the Greek word for sexual immorality in the script is pornea, okay? Pornea is the Greek word for sexual immorality. Pornea is an all-inclusive word for any type of sexual immorality that you can think of. It all falls under this word pornea. It, it, it's, it's adultery, it's fornication, it's pornography, it's any type of sexual immorality or any type of sexual sin. And ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that there is sexual immorality in our culture today that is running rampant, okay? It is rampant. There is a spirit of lust moving across the land. There is a spirit of sexual immorality pressing in on people, and the scripture says that if we live by the Spirit, we will not fall into sexual immorality. Amen? Goes on to say, we're talking about the sinful nature of man, sexual immorality or pornea, impurity, debauchery, idolatry. Can I stop there for a minute? Folks, I want to tell you something. Do not be enamored by man. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because we're getting to the place in the church where the church is enamored by the gifts of a man or a woman, and they're focusing more on them than the God who gave them those gifts. I'm telling you right now, man will disappoint you. I am going to fail. I am going to make mistakes. I am going to disappoint you. Many of you know that very well. I'm going to disappoint you. If we're not careful, sometimes we'll make idols out of people. You hear what I'm saying? We'll look at the way that God is moving in someone's life, and we'll look to them more then we'll look to God. Amen. (laughs) Idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage. Fits of rage. None of us deal with that. Selfish ambition. That's none of us either. Dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Now listen to what it says. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, all right, we've listed the acts of sinful nature. Now we're listing the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit, or the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, we keep hearing this word, live by the Spirit. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. All right, so this is our launching scripture of the day. So we're talking about living by the Spirit. It's so important. You've probably heard me talk about this so many times or mention it, that it's so important that we live by the Spirit and not by the flesh. And we hear the scripture here telling us to live by the Spirit so we will not gratify the sinful desires of the flesh. So we're being exhorted, if you will, to live by the Spirit, but, I, but sometimes we don't really grasp what is that? What does that mean? What does it mean to live by the Spirit? How do we do that? What does it mean, and how do we do it? Remember, the enemy does not want us to live by the Spirit. Because when we live by the Spirit, we don't operate in all the sinful nature of man. The enemy wants us to operate in the sinful nature of man. 
He wants us to operate in sexual immorality. He wants us to operate in jealousy. He wants us to operate in fits of rage. He wants us to operate in drunkenness. He wants us to operate in all of these things, all of the sinful nature of man. That's what he wants us to waller around in. He does not want us empowered by the Spirit of God, living and walking in the Spirit, in being love, joy, patience, long-suffering, gentleness, self-control. He doesn't want us to walk in all those gifts. You hear what I'm saying? So to really understand what it means to live by the Spirit, I want to go back to the very beginning of creation. Now we saw in the book of Genesis, now, let's, now this is important, I want you to get this. We see in Genesis when God is creating the heavens and the earth, he spoke things and they became into existence. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, it says, God said, let there be light, and there was light. He spoke the word he said, let there be light, and light was created. Verse 6 says, let there be expanse between the waters to separate water from the earth. And there was expanse. Verse 9 says, God said, let the water under the, uh, under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry land appear. He spoke it into existence. On and on and on creation of this world was spoke by the word of God. Everything was spoke by the word of God, came into creation except for man. Everything else God created, he created by a spoken word. That is not how he created man. He didn't say, let there be man, and man was there like he did light like he did land, like he did water. This is what he said. Verse 26, let us, did you catch that? Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Now, I didn't make straight A's in English, but I know that when I hear the word us, that means plural. When I hear the word our, that means plural. That's not singular. God is referring to the tr trinity of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three gods in one. He said, let us make man in our image. And the Bible says that he formed man. He didn't speak man into existence. He formed man out of the dust of the ground. And there was a man there, but the man was not alive. It was just a body. It was not alive because there was no spirit in it. It was a physical, flesh, bone, body, and it did not come alive until the scripture says that God breathed into the nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. The Spirit, God is Spirit. He breathed Spirit into man, and man became a living being. Are you with me? So to recap quickly, all of God's creation was spoke by the Word of God into existence except you and I, the man and the woman. He created in the image of God. And it's important that we understand this because man is created like in the image of God. Man also has three parts to him. Now, I've asked some, some young studly men to help me out this morning. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask those studly guys to come on up here. If you're wondering if you're one of them, you're not studly if I didn't ask you. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> I'm not showing any favoritism because these are all folded up. So I don't know what is on each one of these. Well, I know what the words are, but I don't know who's getting what. So I'm just going to give you each one of these. Just put it on. 
while they're getting dressed per se, can you give our three studly men a hand clap here for helping me out this morning? All right. So God said, let us create man in our image. There is a trinity in the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, all three in one, okay? God created man three parts that make up the one body, okay? And I want to take some time this morning to talk about this, all right? Obviously, I forgot to do some, some ironing this morning, but that's okay. So, we have the body which makes up our bones, our flesh, this body, which God said, the word says that God formed, when he created Adam, he formed him out of the dust of the ground. The scripture also says that we are formed by God in our mother's wombs. So one part of man is the physical body, the flesh, the bones, the blood, all that creates the physical body that you can see with your eyes. The other part of man is the soul. The soul represents the mind, the intellect, and the will of man. Are you hearing me? This is important. This is important. I want you to understand this, okay? You have the body, the flesh, the blood, the bones, the organs, that by the way, what does scripture say? That that part of the body will soon go back to the earth. It's going to, it's going to decay, it's gonna die, it's gonna rot, it's going to, it's gonna fall away, okay? Then we have the soul, which is the will, the intellect, the mind of man. This is important. I want to talk about this for a few minutes because we, we have to understand. Listen to what I'm saying to you this morning, okay? Talking about the soul, we're talking about emotions, will, intellect, okay? Now, I want you to see something. In Mark uh, chapter 9, Jesus is doing a teaching and I want to read this to you because he, he quotes a scripture from the prophet Isaiah, Mark chapter 9, nine and 48. He, he's doing a teaching here on people who cause others to sin or to fall, okay? And I'm going to start, a, I only gave you 48, Andrea, but I'm going to start um, at verse 45. It says, and if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown in hell. Listen, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Jesus is quoting a scripture from Isaiah that the prophet said, Isaiah chapter 66, do we have it up here? Did I give you that one? And they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. Their worms that eat them will not die, and the fire that burns will, uh, them will not be quenched. Okay, I, I, I want you to follow me on something here, okay? This word worm that we're talking about here is not referring to a physical earthworm. The word worm is talking about the conscience and the mind of man. Jesus said, where their worm will not die. What that means is, is that when a person dies and goes to hell, their mind, their intellect will always be with them. Now listen to what I'm saying. When a person dies and goes to hell, their mind, where it says their worm will never die, that means that their conscience, their mind will remember every sermon that they sat under, yet they refused 
to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they will forever and eternity remember everything that they did that caused them to end up in hell. Where their mind, their intellect, their soul will never die. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Man will know when he is in hell, his mind, his, his uh, intellect, and his soul will always know what brought him to that place. It's never going to go away. Do you, are you following what I'm saying? This is important. So we have the physical man, we have the soul of man, the mind, the will, the intellect, and we have the spirit of man, okay? Now, I want to remind you of something as I go into this teaching. In John chapter 4, verse 27, Jesus is talking to a woman at the well. Do you remember her? I've, where he says, uh, go get your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. He says, you're right. You've had five husbands and the man you're living with now is not your husband. He says to her, when he's talking about worship, he says these words, he says, God is spirit and those who worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth for those are the types of worshipers that the Father is seeking. I want you to see this this morning. Understand God is spirit, okay? God's perfect design for man, because he is spirit, remember, he breathed life into man. He breathed spirit into man. Man is three-part, body, soul, and spirit. And God's perfect way of communicating with man is the spirit of God, moves on the spirit of man, okay? The spirit of man moves on the mind and the emotions of man, which then moves on the soul, or I'm sorry, the body of man to carry out the action. Do you hear what I'm saying? Okay? The spirit of God moves on the spirit of man, which moves the mind and the intellect and the soul of man, which moves the action of the physical body. So when we go back to Galatians chapter 5, do you see how important this is? Because God says, the word says, if you're not living by the spirit, you are living by your own intellect, your own desire, which your own desire is a bad fleshly desire because we're always, we're born into sin. That's why the scripture says that they are at war, they're at conflict with others, with each other. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Y- y'all gonna tell me y'all, your, si- you, your flesh never has a desire to do something that's wrong? <laughs> Of course it has desire to do wrong. That's why the scripture says that we have to live by the Spirit. Now listen, when man fell, if you you go back to the garden, what does the Bible say? That God came down. He communed with man. He fellowshiped with man. He walked with man. He moved on the spirit of man. You hear what I'm saying? Sin separates God's spirit from man's spirit. And at the, fall of, at the fall of man, there was a separation. Y'all, y'all can say amen every once in a while that'll help us get through this a little, bit fa- a little bit quicker, okay? Jesus died on the cross... And the Holy Spirit, once he departed, the Holy Spirit comes, and now through Jesus, we have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, moving on the spirit of man. Okay? All right, let me break this down to where y'all, 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 it makes sense to y'all, okay? 
you're sitting at a red light. And you know that that red light, when it turns green, only lasts about 10 seconds. And you're in a hurry. You're late for an appointment. And the five cars in front of you, the light turns green, and they're all staring at their phone. And you're counting. One, two, three, four. And you know that light's getting ready to turn yellow. And man, I'm telling you, the, the mind in the flesh start to move they come together in agreement you're laying on the horn you're preaching to them about Sunday school that's what the flesh wants to do the flesh wants to tell them they're number one come see me after service I'll break that down for you or you get cut off in traffic. Someone almost hits you. The, the flesh wants to jump in. But God says, no, live by the Spirit. Let the Spirit move on the soul and the soul move on the flesh because when that happens, you're not going to cuss and get angry and get out of your car and want to beat the stuffing out of somebody. Amen. All right? Let me give you another example. You're at Walmart, and there's 9,000 registers, and only two of them open, and the line is all the way to the back of the store, and you're in a hurry. Ladies and gentlemen, that's when I just put it down, and I walk out of the door. <laughs> I've learned that Walmart is of the devil, all right? I want to try and keep my sanctification so I, I don't even go into Walmart anymore, all right? You understand what I'm getting at here, okay? The scripture, as Paul is teaching it, is saying that the spirit that gets moved on by God wants to do spiritual things. The flesh and the soul does not. This is at war with this. What this wants to do, this does not want to do. What this wants to do, this does not want to do. Are you following me? Okay. So it's important that we get this. It's important that we understand this. We have to understand that we are three parts created by God, and you're either going to be moved by the Spirit of God moving on your spirit, or you're going to be moved by your soul and your flesh. These two are never going to want to do what this one wants to do. It is a training, if you will. You have to bring this into submission. You have to tell this, I know what you want, and I'm not going to give it to you. You hear what I'm saying? Let me break it down for you. This walks into Walmart before he gets to go to check out. And the flesh sees some lady walking down aisle nine that's almost half naked. And you didn't go to Walmart for aisle nine because there's nothing on aisle nine that you need. But your flesh wants to tell you, you need to go down aisle nine. You didn't come for pampers and diapers. But you walking down the paper Nile dial aisle. That's because the flesh is making the decision. Okay? The flesh is not coming into submission. The flesh is doing what the flesh wants to do. Okay? Now listen. When Paul is saying live by the Spirit, this is what he means. The flesh says, I want to go on aisle nine. But the Spirit says, I know what you want. But you ain't getting it. 
Because the spirit of God is moving on the spirit of man and he's speaking to the mind and the intellect and he's bringing this into submission. So when Paul is saying live by the spirit, he's saying allow the spirit of man to make the decisions on what these guys are doing. We are not saved by God to walk around and allowing the flesh to make the decisions all the time. So when it says in Galatians chapter 5, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the sinful desires of the flesh, that's what it's talking about. It's saying, Lord, I know what my flesh wants, but I'm going to walk and live in the spirit today and not in the flesh. Let me just say this, guys. It's a daily grind. It is a daily grind. Okay? You're always going to have temptation in your flesh. That's why Paul says that you have to die daily to the flesh. All right? Stick with me. I know you guys, you guys are young, y'all are strong, so y'all, y'all got no problem standing up here. That's why I picked y'all. All right, now listen. God is spirit. He moves on the spirit. When we're walking and we're being, uh, we're being led by the spirit, we're walking and doing what God wants us to do. But the enemy, listen, the enemy always comes and attacks the mind of man. Because he knows if he can attack the mind of man, the emotions, the mind, the intellect, that that can drive the flesh to do what the enemy wants it to do. Okay? That's how the enemy works. He comes against the mind. Every action that we do first has to be thought of. You, you're, that, that's how God created us. You cannot, when I move my hand like this, my mind had to tell this arm, move like this. Every action that we do has to be thought of first, and the enemy always wants to come against the mind and the, and the emotions of man to attack it, to speak to the flesh You follow me? Now, I want to give you two scriptures that are also important. Uh, 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians. Andrew was panicking back there. You told me first. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I want to read verses 14 and 15. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. What this scripture is saying here is the man who does not operate in the spirit, okay? Man has spirit. Listen, man has spirit. But what this scripture is saying is the man who does not allow the spirit to operate, remember, God is spirit. He moves and guides man by his spirit, okay? So the man who operates only in his mind and his intellect and his emotions, what God is trying to speak and do to him does not make sense because he cannot spiritually discern them because he's allowing these two to control his mind, his emotions, his will, and everything that he does. That's what this scripture is saying, okay? It doesn't mean that this man cannot accept Christ and allow the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God to move on his spirit. It doesn't mean that. It just means that that man who is walking without being led by the Spirit that he cannot accept the things that come from the Spirit of God because they are foolishness to him. 
Have you ever tried to speak to somebody who didn't understand the Word of God, didn't understand God, didn't understand how the Spirit of God moves, and you're sharing something with them, and they're looking at you like you're the dumbest person on the planet? It is because they're not being led by the Spirit. They're being led by their own intellect. Okay? They don't get it. They don't understand it. It doesn't mean that they're not smart because, again, they could, they could have a doctorate degree and not understand the things of the Spirit. That's why when the world, when you try to tell the world about the supernatural, they look at you like an idiot because they don't understand it because they're in the world. Okay? So that's another reason why it's important that we be led by the Spirit because if we're not, we are not understanding what the Spirit of God is telling us that He wants us to do and what He wants to do in our lives and our family. Folks, listen to me. <clears throat> the last time I checked, and, and, and men, don't feel like I'm picking on you right now, but I just want to share this. The last time I checked, God has an order for your family. And that order is that he is to be number one and that the man is the head of the house as Christ is the head of the church who gave himself up for the church. And the, and the command of the man being the head of the house is to love your family as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for the church. Men, you are the spiritual leader of your house. So therefore, the enemy wants to come against you because when you are not leading your family in the spirit, you are then leading them in the flesh. And, and the devil's not after one, he's after all. So if he can affect you, he has the ability for it to trickle down on your wife and your kids. You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? This is important. If the enemy can convince me to go out and be a drunken fool and do things that I shouldn't do, it's going to affect my wife. It's going to affect my children. My decisions is going to affect them. Likewise, if I'm led by the Spirit, that also can affect my family. Being led by the Spirit, let's not get this uh, confused. Being led by the Spirit doesn't mean that you're a perfect individual that never makes mistakes or never has the desire to sin. Because as long as you're on this earth, you are going to have desire to sin. You just have to be able to allow your spirit man to be moved by the Spirit of God to overcome the desire to sin. You will never, ever get to a place where you won't have a sexual thought pop in your head about someone. Is that all right? All right? That's not going to happen as long as you're living on the earth. But you can take control of that. According to the word, bring every thought captive, obedient to Christ. Okay? So just because you're having these thoughts doesn't mean that you're not a Christian. It just means that you're a human and that you have flesh. So don't get to the place where you're like, why, why, you know, why, you know, why, why is this happening to me? It's happening because you're a human you're, and you have flesh and the devil hates you. One more scripture. Y'all still awake? Jude chapter what? One. <laughs> that was a test. <laughs> Ain't but one chapter in the book of Jude. That's it. Jude chapter one, I want to read to you verses 17 and 19. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you in the last days or times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. That means they're going to be led by the flesh. Okay? These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts 
and do not have the Spirit. You hearing what I'm saying? When it says they don't have the Spirit, it means they don't have the Spirit of God moving on their spirit. Man always has spirit because we're three parts, just like God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? Is this making sense this morning? All right. Gentlemen, just for your help, you can keep the shirts. Thank you so much. You guys can have a seat. Use them to wash your cars. <clears throat> Does this, is this bringing a little bit more clarity this morning to this scripture in Galatians chapter 5 where it says live life by the Spirit? So we, we, we want to we make it crystal clear that when the scripture says to live by the Spirit, this is what it's talking about. Folks, I'm getting ready to close with this. It is a daily decision to live by the Spirit or to live by the flesh. It's daily. There is a constant battle going on between the Spirit and the flesh. The question that I want to ask you this morning is... Who's currently winning the majority of the battles? Don't raise your hand. Take an inventory in your mind right now. Just this past week, who's winning the majority of the battles? Is it the Spirit being moved by the Spirit of God? Or is it the flesh? and doing what your own mind and intellect tells you to do. You could be very, very intelligent and think you're making a good decision, but in the eyes of God, it could be a foolish one. Now, I'm not trying to tell you don't use your intelligence. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just wanting you to understand if we constant re, constantly rely on our own intelligence, it will lead us astray. There's been plenty of times where I've made a decision that at the time the decision looked like it was bulletproof. And I look back and I'm like, man, what was I thinking? <laughs> you been there before? All right. We're getting ready to pray. I want to ask Bob to dim the lights and have our prayer team come on up and get, get situated. Come on, bow your heads with me. just a few minutes I'm going to pray and when I'm done praying I'm going to open up this altar for prayer and if God is speaking to you about anything if you if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior today could be your day if you're dealing with something in your life if you're dealing with an addiction if you're dealing with um, a, a physical ailment that you need healing over whatever it is I, if you need prayer this morning we want you to know that we're here to pray for you it doesn't have to have anything to do with what I was preaching about or teaching about this morning. It just, it, we always end our service with opening up our altars and giving people the opportunity to be prayed over. So if you're here this morning and you need prayer for anything, when I say this closing prayer, I'm going to ask you to come forward and we'll take time and we'll pray with you. When I'm done praying, if you're not asking for prayer, I just ask that you would quietly and reverently just walk out into the foyer. You can fellowship out there. You can talk out there. We do have prayer this Wednesday night starting at 7 o'clock. I want to invite you to come out and be a part of that. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you this morning for your word. And we thank you 
for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, I'm asking this morning that you would just bring clarity to your word this morning. And as we take inventory of our lives this morning, would you show us places that maybe we're not living by the Spirit? Would you show us areas in our life that we have guarded from you and we've decided to run these areas ourselves and not give them to you? God, would you awaken us this morning to the things of your spirit? That we would have spiritually discernment, spiritual discernment, and that we can live a lifestyle daily led by the spirit of God, moving on the spirit of man that moves our mind and moves our physical bodies in the directions and the ways that you want us to go. Father, I ask for your protection around your people as they leave here today. That you would just surround them with a hedge of protection. Protect their children, their households, their families, and just use them for your glory. Father, thank you for meeting us here in this place today. And we ask as we leave here today, God, that we can be your voice, your hands and your feet in our community, wherever you take us throughout our week. There may be someone in the parking lot somewhere that needs prayer like this lady in Publix parking lot in Bellevue. May we have the discernment to see those people that are hurting. May we be led by your spirit and not by our flesh. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This concludes our service. If you're wanting prayer this morning, I invite you down. If not, I ask that you just quietly... Make your way out to the foyer. God bless you. Thank you for being here today.